Kempo 5.0 is a hybrid version of American Kempo established by Master Jeff Speakman, and it fuses together traditional stand-up fighting with a grappling system. Master Speakman rose to fame with the martial arts classic film The Perfect Weapon, and he has continued forward as a prominent figure, teaching seminars and growing his system of Kempo. Now, we caught up with Mr. Speakman at one of his seminar tours here in South Florida to talk about more about what Kempo 5.0 is and what it's like teaching in the current martial landscape. Can you give us a quick summary of what Kempo 5.0 is? Yes. Um, it's Kempo's answer to how to use your Kempo on the ground. <clears throat> so it incorporates a huge amount of what you or I would look at and see as Jiu-Jitsu or as MMA. Uh, <clears throat> and then that is incorporated into what we do. So from the view from 10,000 feet, it's going to look like, oh, okay, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you guys do Kempo. Tuesday, Thursday, you do Jiu-Jitsu. But that really isn't accurate because there are things that we do down in there that they don't do because they're a sport and we're an art. So they have rules and we have none. So the short version is what I did, what we did collectively, all of us, is we sort of learned what your rules were, which now we know what you don't do. And then we try to take advantage of that little window of opportunity, like protecting the groin, for example forever I, i've had this conversation with mma guys and some of some note that you know they go you know you can't kick to the groin when why do you do that and i said we were here from 1953 you're the ones that took it out so i so i get it i understand that but you're the one that took it out we didn't bring it in so at what point did you decide that it was worth starting over from scratch rather than just tweaking the current structures well, that, the answer to that question is actually very, very, very long. It's a long process. Let me put it this way. You will be very hard pressed to find another person who's more grateful to the Gracie and Machado family than me or, or everybody who's in my organization because you shoved it down our throats. You, know? you, you brought the harsh reality of what you do and to arts like older Kempo who had no answer for once you're down there, what do you do? Their answer was, well, we don't do that. And, and my answer to that is, whether you th want to or not, you're gonna do that, you know? You're, what, are, what are the real threat? What's the real probability that you or I are gonna go to the ground in a street altercation, given how popular that is now? Throw on that, that I'm six foot two, 52, so who are you going to want to stand up and duke it out with me because you don't know who I am? Or you want to take me to the ground, take all my striking away, and then try to maul me down there? So the chance, in my opinion, is far greater than 50% that if I or someone like me winds up in an, a street altercation and you have that skill set, your first goal is to get me off my feet. That's your first job. And if you're even moderate, that you don't even have to be very good, you're going to be successful. You know, this is really my bigger message to the Kempo world. We gotta stop saying, we don't do that. Uh, you would never be able to take me down. I just poke him in the eye or I'd bite him. You won't, you won't. The argument that I wanna make for the rest of the Kempo world to reflect on is, we gotta get rid of the idea that I don't need to learn that, unless you really don't care about the effectiveness of the art. You don't care about how Ed Parker affected your life or my life or the life and the world of the martial art. I care deeply about that. And he did, by the way, ask all of us, us being his black belt, to continue to modify and change the art over time to make sure it doesn't become irrelevant. You know, big words. Now, that statement's got to be 40 years old, right? So you think about that. 40 years ago he saw this coming you know and everyone that I know that knew him they all in one way or another say the same thing which is if he were alive today he would have addressed absolutely he would have addressed the issue now would it look exactly like what we do sort of kind of like we do nothing like what we do who knows but I believe completely that because I knew him very well I refer to as Parker Ed Parker as the Einstein of martial arts. I really do think he was that brilliant. And the thing that made Einstein and people like him so amazing, which you read about their life, 
is they're able to look at the same thing everybody else is looking at and see something completely different. And that's what made them amazing in their world. And that is the definition of who Ed Parker was and what he did. He, he was able to look at this and, and bring the science and the physics. He Americanized it by bringing the science into these ancient Chinese fighting techniques. Now we took that and yes, we took it further. We brought in the application of Newtonian physics and the, the mass and acceleration through time and space and action. But, but he was already doing all that. We just took it down here on the ground. So we, like you, a Kempo guy, you talk about checking a line of entry with a strike or a positional check or whatever. Well, we do the same thing laying on the ground. So it is a Kempo ground system that when you stand back like this, it looks like Jiu Jitsu or MMA, but it really isn't. It's a Kempo ground system. Okay, so now that you've got Kempo 5.0 and you tell yourself it's ready, how did you go about releasing it into the wild? Wow. <laughs> it was a, uh, if you use the term grassroots, now I had a seminar here where I was able to share and ask and exchange these ideas with people. Many of them knew me. I knew them from many, many years ago, but most of them have never had a 5.0 seminar with me. When they had seminars with me, it was pre-5.0. So now I was able to talk to them and say, this is what is needed, this is how we think, and this is what took us from here to there. And then they can in turn ask me questions and then they can think about it. But I'm not trying to get you to leave that guy or girl and come with me. That isn't my game. I don't need to do that. But I am very much involved in the game of evolving Kempo and getting the message out, which is, we are doing exactly what Ed Parker asked us to do. And the fact that you're not may make you angry or may make you not like me or whatever, but I'm good with that. What is it like teaching to people who have never seen Kempo before versus Kempo veterans? Yeah, boy, big, big difference there. It is so much easier teaching people who never did Kempo before. There's a natural and understandable resistance from that because you do have a connection to whether it's your system or your instructor or your fellow students or black belts or what have you. And, and certainly, of course, I understand that. But the necessity to change is very clear. When you started teaching seminars, did you get a lot of pushback from the Kempo community? Yes and no. Um, uh, that's very much an individual personality kind of assessment. Um, if we go back to the first days when it first came out, of what I was doing, keeping in mind that I, on every step of every way, I went to the Kempo senior person that I attached myself to after Mr. Parker died, died who is Steve, was Steve Labonte. He's now transitioned to the other side as well. But I went to Steve Labonte with every single thing. When I did my first videos on this, I, he was the first one to see them. And I got, and he's a very, very disciplined, old school, very much. And I got nothing but praise and encouragement from him on every step. Whenever I wanted to test for another degree in black belt, I went to Lou Angel, who taught me first, and I went to Steve Labonte in Kempo. What is some advice you can offer for anyone looking for a Kempo instructor? You will learn a lot about that instructor by looking at the students, not the instructor. That's what I encourage everybody to do. Because you could be wowed by the talents and speed of somebody who's really amazing at what they do, but I'm not impressed by you, I'm impressed by what you can do to help other people. And that is the difference, if I may, between uh, martial fighting and martial art, right? Martial fighting is I must cause someone to fall for myself to advance. Very important, we need that, we do it. We have our own system of competition called 5 Fighter. So it's not like I'm not in that game, I'm in that game, but I have it in perspective because the important thing is not who you can hurt, but who you can help. Though if you want to be a martial artist, you would actually sacrifice something of yourself to help someone else rise above, as opposed to you causing them to fall so you can rise above. And if I think if we use that as a template of how to be in the world, of how to choose to be a martial artist over a martial fighter, that it's not about, the lo let me put it this way, the lowest common denominator that we share as martial artists is that we can beat somebody up. Is it necessary? Absolutely. Uh, so yes, the application, the street application of the arts is absolutely imperative, but it is not the end game. 
the end game is to enlighten yourself and to raise your own personal vibration so you can help to raise the vibration of other people around you. What's the value of that? Because then when you die, and you're going to, you have actually made a difference. You've made the world a better place because you were here. And that is what makes you special or makes you a jerk. So people are always asking me where they can find a Kempo 5.0 school because they don't always have one located near them. Can you tell us about your online Kempo 5.0 program? You bet. Big deal. That has been a game changer. So, and that is we took our entire system, put in agonizing detail, teaching every one of the 145 techniques, putting every set and every kata, clearly, slowly explain everything on video. <clears throat> that video is on the website, jeffspeakman.com. You and any of the plus 5,000 students around the world have access to that 24 seven, anywhere in the world on any device. So you can be having lunch in Italy, pull up your cell phone and go to jeffspeakman.com and pull up the technique you can't quite remember and you can just sit there and watch it. Then I wrote all of them, which you can print the written version and have an accumulative journal if you wish. And though that's also right now available to you in Spanish, also being translated into French, Flemish, and, um, and German. But because of that, we created a thing called the online university, which you just brought up. Anybody can, out of anywhere in the world now, can go to jeffspeakman.com, click on the online university, and be directly connected with Jenny Kuiper, who runs that part of the world. Anywhere in the world, you can now study Kempo 5 through her, through this online portal. And she archives all of her classes, so you could be in Dubai. You can be in any time zone in the world you want, and just watch those lessons as they become available to you. You can test online, but only through Purple Belt. When you go to blue or above, so for us it's blue, then green, then brown, and then black. When you go to blue or above, you must physically travel to a school somewhere in the world. And it might be a long journey, it might not. Everybody wants to go to Las Vegas. I live in Las Vegas, so come and study at my school and test there if you want. Once you're in the 5-0 family, all of the schools around the world are your home. So you belong to the online academy, but next month you're gonna to go to Sydney, Australia on a vacation or visit a family or whatever. Call the school, David Giamenko, that we have in Sydney and go train with them for free. Because once you're a part of my family, you're welcome everywhere in the world where we have a school. You wanna come and be a part of that energy that I'm talking about? Then come, join us, become a part of the 5-0 solution. And you will be welcomed and we can have a wonderful life together. If you don't want to play by that game, if you're here for rank, if you have jumped rank, this is a real big problem. So much of the Kempo world is using, are using black belt diplomas as a currency. You come into my association and you're a third, I'll give you a fourth. I, who are you to get? You can't do that, except it's happening everywhere. And it gets worse. There are people that jump rank. I personally know people who are fifth degree black belt, they went to this other association, that day, they got an eighth degree black belt. What happened to six and seven? And if you follow Mr. Parker's direction, there's a five year minimum between each belt from fifth and above. So you just jumped 10 or 15 years. Now, do you have the right to do that? Yes, but here's the other question. How do you think that makes me and all of my black belts around the world feel? Nobody gets a free pass on my home. Nobody, for one reason, I didn't. I didn't take it. This is a 10th <clears throat> that I just got after 45 years. And my eighth, ninth, 10th, seventh, all the way down the line, that was a test. I got out in line with my students in front of a board of 12 to 15 of the senior black belts from every different style all the way around the world. And there was only one person that I would accept a 10th degree black belt from and that was from Benny Urquidez. So uh, I was so thrilled when he immediately said, yes, it would be an honor, I would love to do that. And we were chatting about this and he said, um, not only are you the first 10th degree black belt I've ever promoted, which I had no idea, he said, you will be the last. And I was really rocked by that. And once again, what an honor to, to have that. And I understand it. I, I get how important it is, and I 
I respect it and I love it. I just love it. Now I will spend the rest of my life in martial arts trying to live up to the great honor that he gave me. The last point I would like to make for everybody who's <clears throat> watching, and by the way, thank you so much for what you've done for me and for 5.0 in the past. It, the, the interviews we've done in the past, I'm telling you, it's been an avalanche of people uh, really responding so positively to what you've done. So my gratitude for helping me to do that. But uh, the last thing I would like to say is, is um, the, the single most uh, common cause of death around the world is birth. And, and because you're born, because there's a beginning, there's gonna be an end. So the conversation we should be having is what are you gonna do with your billion to billion and a half heartbeats? What are you doing to help the common good? My choice is to do it through the world of the martial arts. It's really about the love and the friendship that we dearly have for one another. I love my black belts and I know they love me. And that is number one. A distant second is the karate. So these are lessons of how to be a better human. And that is what I would like people to reflect on. A great big thank you to Master Speakman for taking a moment to speak with us and sharing his experience with Kempo 5.0. Now, if you want a more detailed look at the Kempo 5.0 system, then click right here. You'll learn about how he went about building the system as well as the fighting structure with the Kempo 5.0 fighter program.